Hello everyone, my name is Garcy. I'm 26 years old, and I've been dating my boyfriend, whom I met through an online game for exactly one year. Initially, I was nervous about meeting someone online, but we instantly clicked due to our similar family backgrounds. Now, he's the one who understands me the most and is incredibly important to me. We were invited to an outdoor party hosted by his friend and decided to attend together. It was a barbecue at a cabin owned by his friend's father. Everything tasted delicious, and I met his friends for the first time. Their wives and girlfriends were all wonderful people. Initially, I was nervous, but by the time we left, I was completely at ease. On the way back, he suddenly stopped the car and started to talk. What did you think about my friends? He asked. They're all very nice people. I'm glad I could get along with them and had fun. Thank you for taking me there, I replied. Really, I'm glad. You know, I hope we can keep having fun like this preferably as husband and wife. What do you think? I was surprised. Was that a proposal? Of course, my answer was yes. It felt like a dream. We were so excited. In the heat of the moment, we decided, let's have our wedding there, and headed to a memorable hotel. This was the first place he brought me on our first drive date when we had just started dating. It's a quiet hotel in the mountains, and from the restaurant, you can see the lake in front of the hotel. Not only was the view stunning, but there was also a couple having their wedding at that time, and he remembered me saying how lovely it was. We both agreed that we would like to have our wedding there. However, as soon as we arrived, our hopes were dashed. It is indeed a secluded hotel but it's famous for its high status. At the moment, we were returning from an outdoor event dressed casually in t-shirts, jeans, sneakers, and carrying backpacks. It was clear that we did not fit into the upscale atmosphere of this hotel. The bellhop, who should have greeted us, glanced at us, and then blatantly ignored us, we even caught him exchanging looks and laughing with other staff members. We began to feel self-conscious about our attire, but my boyfriend confidently continued walking deeper into the lobby. During this time, the front desk staff were whispering and pointing toward us. It was an uncomfortable feeling. The last time we were here, we were dressed more formally and the atmosphere was completely different. Feeling out of place, I tugged at his hand, but he pulled mine back as if to tell me not to worry. We arrived at the concierge desk. Upon seeing us, the concierge seemed startled, but after taking a good look at us, he asked with a cold smile, May I help you? I wanted to retort that of course we needed help. That's why we were standing there, but I let my boyfriend handle the situation. We are actually considering holding our wedding ceremony here. Could you tell us where the wedding reception desk is? On hearing this, the concierge made a clearly disgusted face. This isn't your ordinary city hotel. It's a place frequented by celebrities and the wealthy. I don't think it's the kind of place where people like you would hold a wedding. I'm aware. We've been here before. We love the view and thought it would be great to hold our ceremony here. As I said, this isn't a place where people like you would have a wedding. What do you mean by that? Can you just connect us to the wedding reception desk? I could sense his frustration growing as his voice raised. I gently squeezed his hand to calm him down as the concierge continued speaking. What I'm saying is this hotel is not a place for poor people like you. Please leave immediately. What did he just call us? Poor? This concierge just called us poor. 
Despite his polite phrasing, he just called us poor. I was ready to tell him off for his snooty attitude, but I decided to let my boyfriend handle it. Did you just call your customer poor? What's wrong with the staff training at this hotel? My boyfriend's voice was firm. Sir, I must ask you to leave this lobby immediately, as it is getting dirty and causing an inconvenience to the other guests. Cut it out already. We're just asking for a wedding consultation. Can't you at least let us look around without any hassle? I interjected, feeling my frustration rising. A tour? A wedding? You've got to be kidding. Even if you worked your whole life and saved every penny, you couldn't afford a wedding here. A tour would be a complete waste of time, wouldn't it? The concierge's disdainful tone grated on my nerves. Hey, that's enough. Let's go home. The other customers are watching, too, my boyfriend said, trying to diffuse the escalating tension. Garcy, just stay out of it. This hotel won't do if they can't get it together. They need to act properly, he continued, his frustration evident. He hates injustice so much that he's ruthless when dealing with people who act unfairly. Generally, this only stirs up animosity and heats things up, I thought to myself, watching the exchange. How did you learn customer service? You're supposed to be a specialist as a concierge, right? Is it acceptable to treat us the way you just did? My boyfriend's voice cut through the tension, demanding an answer. At that moment, a voice came from behind. What's going on here? Apparently, the manager had come over, thinking we were causing a disturbance. We're simply asking to be shown around because we're interested in having a wedding here, my boyfriend replied stoically. Just like the other staff, the manager gave us a top-to-bottom once-over, chuckled dismissively, and said, I'm afraid a wedding at our hotel might be out of your reach. The concierge joined in after hearing his words. That's exactly what I told them, but they won't leave, and it's causing a problem. It's a disturbance to our other guests for you to be in the lobby for such a long period. I'm sorry, but I think it's best if you give up on the wedding and please leave, the manager stated firmly. Hold on a second. We were just asking to look around because we're interested in having a wedding here. Isn't it okay if you just show us around? I asked, trying to reason with them. Sir, I am the manager of this hotel. If you continue to loiter here, he gestured to call security. So what do we need to do to be able to look around? Well, if you were to buy the hotel and become the owner, the situation seemed even more absurd at his words. I was on the brink of losing it, thinking, what the heck is he talking about? But my boyfriend just said, I see, so that's how it is. The owner, huh? And started to ponder. Just then, security started to approach us, so I grabbed his hand and urged him to leave. As we walked away with our backs to the manager, he started giving instructions to the concierge. Contact the cleaning staff. The lobby has been completely dirtied. Have it cleaned immediately. What the heck was dirty? In my mind, I cursed at them thinking their attitudes were far dirtier than anything else. We left the hotel behind us, quite upset. I thought of taking a walk in the garden and admiring the lake before heading home, but we were quickly spotted by the manager from before as we strolled through the garden. Ah, yes, this is troublesome. If you walk around here, it could ruin the view for other guests who are enjoying the scenery. What's the big deal about looking at the view? That's not okay? My boyfriend asked. 
This view is for the guests who use our hotel. If you can't afford it, please hurry and leave. He tried to shoo us away. Are you possibly thinking about a wedding? Dreaming of a garden wedding? It's useless. Do you have any idea how much it costs to rent out this entire garden? Please make your way out, he said, then sprayed me with a hose. Stop loitering and get going. Oh no, I'm all wet now. What is this old guy thinking? This hotel might not be as safe as we thought, even if he's not the one in charge, I exclaimed. Hey, what do you think you're doing? My boyfriend shouted. There was a stray cat in the garden. I was just sprinkling water to clean it up, the manager replied. Suddenly, the stray cat reappeared, and he threatened to spray water again. My boyfriend, at his wit's end, shouted, Are you referring to Garcy as a stray cat? Enough is enough. Is this how a person in hospitality behaves, spraying water on people? Hey, call the cops. I had a feeling it was going to turn into a big deal. Enraged, I told him, I want to change my clothes, let's go, and dragged him back to the car. We came here excited about planning our wedding, but this turned out to be quite an ordeal. This hotel feels so different from when we visited on our date. It's almost like a different hotel altogether. Now, with wet clothes, the reality of the situation was clear. I'm so glad I had a change of clothes in the car, I said. After changing and feeling a bit refreshed, he asked me, Garcy, what do you want to do? Do you still want to have our wedding at this hotel? Honestly, I didn't really care at that point. It's still a place of fond memories, I said. I don't know. The hotel itself is lovely but I'm not sure about the staff. He simply replied, I see, let's think about it a bit. And that was the end of the conversation. Afterward, we decided to at least pay our respects to both families. It's been a whirlwind since then. Our parents asked about our plans for the wedding and reception. For now, we told them we've planned a small, intimate ceremony with only friends and family, and asked them to hold off on the location. We've been visiting bridal fairs at other hotels, looking for a good place, but we haven't found one that feels just right. I found myself in a bit of a bind, considering options for our wedding. Perhaps a destination wedding abroad would be an option. Just as I was flipping through a bridal magazine with these thoughts, my boyfriend called. Garcy, we did it. We can get married at that hotel. What? What do you mean? It was a bit of a struggle, but since it's my hotel now, you can plan the wedding any way you like. I couldn't believe it. He had been working on this all along. It turns out he's the son of a wealthy family and managed to get that hotel acquired by their chain of hotels. The old man said if I wanted to get married, I should become the hotel owner, he said, sounding quite pleased. I was too stunned to say anything in response to his surprising actions, but we decided to visit the hotel the following week. Finally, the day arrived. On the way there, my boyfriend said cheerfully, that hotel's reputation hasn't been great lately and it's been affecting business. So I'll work on making it a better hotel, okay? He seemed to be having a lot of fun. The last time we visited, it was nerve wracking because of how we were treated. But this time, the hotel staff were prim and proper, ready to welcome their new owner. Looking around, I felt a sense of relief and excitement. I noticed that the bellboy, who once scoffed at us, was now bowing deeply in welcome. If they could welcome us properly now, they should have done so from the beginning. Knowing about their previous terrible service, 
their current behavior seemed quite insincere. I felt like laughing at them now, but I must keep my composure. Then came the hotel manager. Welcome, Mr. Owner. Not just the manager, but also the concierge and the rest of the staff greeted us respectfully. They didn't seem to realize that we were the poor people they had treated terribly before. It's shocking to see such a difference in treatment based on appearance. The way they change their attitude so quickly is honestly appalling, but it's a good lesson for me. And so we were shown to the owner suite, and the manager was fawning over us. We've been eagerly awaiting the arrival of the new owner, and to think it's someone as young as you. It's truly impressive that you are the owner of this hotel at your age. Your wife is also quite beautiful, a truly stunning couple, the manager said. I couldn't believe it. Who is this guy? He called us stray cats, but now he's saying we're handsome and beautiful. Aren't those glasses missing lenses? And the manager doesn't remember customers' faces at all. That's wild, I said. We decided to wait for a while since he said he'd create a space for us to greet the employees later. When the manager left to prepare, I remarked, what's up with that manager? He doesn't know anything about us. Is he handsome and beautiful, seriously? It seems like he didn't notice at all. It's kind of impressive in that way. Well, he looks enthusiastic, so I guess it's fine if he does what he wants, my boyfriend replied. Is it okay for that guy to be the manager, I wondered. Don't worry, he said. As we continued our conversation, it was time for him to go to the hall where the employees were gathered. I have become the owner of this hotel. I know you may be uneasy since I'm young, but the headquarters will manage the business firmly, so please rest assured. We plan to operate this hotel as a secluded hideaway, different from the luxury hotels in the city. After repairing the aging parts, we will have a renewal opening. In conjunction with the reopening, I'm thinking of having my own wedding ceremony here to commemorate the start of the hotel and me. The unexpected, happy announcement stirred up the employees. Then he called me to introduce his fiance, and I went up to the stage. When I got up there, the manager standing proudly next to him looked utterly surprised. That person is, that's my fiance. Oh, it wasn't our first meeting, was it? You didn't recognize me either, did you? He said. At his direction, I was dressed in a t-shirt, denim, and sneakers, like the last time we visited the hotel. If I had worn a dress and heels, he wouldn't have noticed. But just by changing my clothes, he seemed to remember me right away. Seriously, this manager seems to judge people solely by their clothes. Looking around, the bell staff and front desk staff who laughed at us that day were staring at us with wide eyes. The concierge, looking pale, finally seemed to remember us. My boyfriend, who confirmed the situation, continued talking to the employees. Actually, we visited this hotel the other day, and at that time, we were both dressed like her now. I got her approval for my proposal, so I was over the moon when we came here, thinking we wanted to have our wedding here. The bellboy, that's you, right? You ignored us without even saying welcome and laughed at us. The front desk staff were pointing and whispering about us. The concierge, you didn't listen or pay attention when we said we wanted to have our wedding here. You told us that poor people should go home. The worst was you, the manager. Actually, I recorded our conversation from the middle of it and decided to let everyone hear it. 
The recording of the exchange with the manager played, and the employees started murmuring with disbelief on their faces. They called them poor people. Isn't that terrible treatment? They began to say. The manager turned pale and trembled. As you can see, we were treated as poor because of our modest attire, and in the end, we were doused with water and driven out. This is unacceptable, isn't it? There were nods of agreement from the crowd. Regardless of what we were wearing, I come from a family that owns a chain of hotels, and she is the daughter of a big pharmaceutical company CEO. We are not poor. This time, we were advised by your manager here to become the owners if we wanted to have our wedding here. But what if we were other guests? This should never happen, right? I chimed in. This hotel, which is not particularly conveniently located, should offer the best service to all guests who take the trouble to come here. I want to return this hotel to the state it once was. Let's make this the best hotel together. Applause filled the room. Afterward, he demoted everyone from the manager and concierge to staff who had reports of poor work attitudes. The manager and concierge were asked to start from scratch, learning from the cleaning staff. In their place, staff who had been neglected despite their excellence, as well as part-time workers, were promoted to better positions. He placed the right people in the right roles, creating a lively working environment. He actively listened to opinions, quickly implementing good ideas with a sense of urgency. Even as an onlooker, you could feel the overall atmosphere of the hotel improving, and so he successfully transformed the hotel. By the way, we were able to hold our wedding ceremony at the hotel as initially planned. Of course, it was during a quieter time, and we kept it low-key. About a year later, he handed down the hotel management to a new manager and quickly stepped down. It should be okay now, he said, but it seems the real reason was that he wanted more time to play his favorite video games. <laughs>